Well, Rajiv, what do you think? Let's want to get started yeah. on this? Sure, of course, okay. of course. Well, listen, so, so I mean, everyone I think knows knows who I am. If, if you don't, or just as a refresher, my name's James Adams. I'm, I'm a, a U.S. citizen, been living here in Honduras for over 20 years, and um, been involved in, in wildlife conservation and ecotourism um, that entire time. Um, I run a, a company called Natural Selections Tours, and we do tours to different countries throughout the world, including here in Honduras, and definitely, most definitely Sri Lanka. And uh, um, Rajiv was kind enough to offer. Uh, Rajiv uh, Wellinkala is what you would call our ground operator in Sri Lanka. Um, I, I operate and organize the tour, and Rajiv provides the guides, the logistics, the transportation, and the accommodations, and all that, all that stuff for us in Sri Lanka. Um, he is with a company called Classic Sri Lanka, which, as far as I can tell, is the premier uh, inbound travel company in Sri Lanka. They do a fantastic job, which is our, our last experience in Sri Lanka was, was so flawless and so awesome, not only in terms of wildlife, but just in terms of the service and logistics um, that I wouldn't even consider going anywhere else. So what I'll do right now is uh, hand this over to Rajiv. He is, a, he, is, he is obviously a Sri Lankan, and he is an expert in Sri Lankan culture and wildlife, and we will let him go. Okay, thank you so much, James, and uh, very flattering, uh, kind words as well. Uh, so welcome, everyone. I like to say, Ayuboan. This is the way we greet in Sri Lanka. This uh, greeting means may you live a long life. And uh, that being said, I hope you all are keeping safe and healthy during this period of lockdown. And uh, just to give a brief about who I am, I've been a wildlife photographer. Uh, for as far as I can know, I picked up my first uh, camera when I was 10 years old and been exploring every corner of the island all my life and i'm um, very passionate about uh, sri lanka wildlife photography conservation and travel and um, i like to showcase to you what i like to call the ultimate island safari it's a small island but there's so much to see so starting by uh, our location uh, for for those located in the states it's a uh, very a bit far away from your uh, uh, the United States, but uh, it's very close to India. We are an island on the Indian Ocean, a little below India, and uh, we have a population of 20,000, sorry, 20 million, which is quite a lot for an island, but uh, despite the huge human population, we have some amazing wildlife and some varied habitats as well. Uh, you take our island, there are different climate zones uh, I won't go into detail, but we have an uh, area called the wet zone. This is uh, my city, the capital of Colombo is also part of the wet zone. And also uh, we have some dry areas. So this is great for the safaris, for the big game. And uh, then we have uh, very arid zones, which are uh, also very dry and uh, arid in nature. And then we have the mountains in the center. These are elevations above 1,000 meters above sea level. So, so each of these zones are unique in its own way. I'll just go through roughly uh, some of the habitats. Uh, so one of them is the lowland rainforest. These are tropical rainforests, which are very humid and have a lot of rainfall. And these are great for birding and also herping uh, for a lot of reptiles and other species and uh, Singharaja and Kithulgala are some of the key places which can be categorized as lowland rainforest. Um, there are a lot of endemic species uh, which are found nowhere else in the world and uh, then we move to the highlands. We have uh, forests uh, called cloud forests because of the high elevation uh, there's a lot of humidity, but there's, it's very cold in climate and there's a lot of mist and fog and the trees and the plant life is very unique. They are much shorter and smaller uh, in appearance to the, uh, compared to the rainforest and they're very gnarly in appearance. And then there is also open plains, open grasslands in these uh, highlands. And 
one of the key places uh, which can be a key example uh, is Horton Plains National Park. A beautiful area, uh, love amazing sceneries and landscapes and also very important for biodiversity. There's a lot of unique endemic species found in the highlands. So um, these are also, these are also from Horton Plains uh, and uh, some beautiful uh, landscapes as you can see. And it can get quite cold. Uh, the temperatures do go up down to uh, five centigrade. Uh, but you, even though the number, you know, it doesn't seem very low, uh, because of the high humidity, you need a lot of warm clothing uh, if you are traveling in the highlands, because you can, uh, you have a lot of uh, wetness and dampness. And then we have the grasslands in the low, in the dry dry zone. So the grasslands are great for elephants and big game. And this is uh, Vilpato. So this is also dry. It's a dry zone area, but also heavily forested and more densely covered. And uh, Vilpato being such a large park also has areas called sand forests. So there's a lot of sand along with the bush and the forest. So the landscapes vary greatly from location to location and you find unique wildlife in each area. So this is in Wilpatu. Uh, even though it's, you can see in the background, it's very f uh, densely forested. Leopards and big, big game do come out into the open. And then we also have coastal mangroves um, that are great for bird life and also for uh, species like the saltwater crocodile, which we also try to find. Um, so this is uh, closer to the coast, near the lagoons and the coastal areas, you get the mangroves. So uh, we'll look at some of the iconic species we see in our island. Uh, though it's a small country, uh, I think the diversity overall can even rival big continents like Africa and even uh, subcontinents like India. So starting with our apex predator, this is the land of the leopard. So this is the only big cat found in Sri Lanka. And because of that, it's, they are quite uh, forward and uh, more uh, used to walking during daylight. And yeah, I would like, like to say that Sri Lanka is the best place, if not one of the best places in the world to see leopards. And these are, these are all from Wilpatu National Park. And um, so they are, pretty forward as you can see and uh, out in the open during daytime. So if you go to countries like India or Africa, uh, they have to compete with other big cats like the tiger and the lion, but not the case here. We are, they are the apex predators. So they're quite bold. Uh, this was very close to our safari jeep when we did uh, photograph. Uh, it just came, walked right up to us and uh, then we have, yeah, so this is, uh, hi, Cindy, I think we just uh, got you in. Uh, James, uh, you can introduce, so I'm continuing. This is the yeah, so, uh, so this is a young cub, which we, uh, which I photographed a few years ago, uh, also in Vilpatu. As you notice, Vilpatu can be densely forested. So you had to look through the, uh, through the greenery and the foliage. Uh, but they do come out in the open like this and they can be if they are if you if you go with a good naturalist and a good guide who understands how to follow and track the animal you do get unforgettable sightings like this and most of the time you, it's uh, only you uh, at the particular sighting especially Wilpatu which is a large park and we are moving to Yala National Park which is located in the south and the landscape is uh, more different to Vilpatu because uh, it's more arid uh, and also it's close to the coast. And this results in a more uh, bushy uh, scrub kind of environment. And also there are a lot of rocky boulders and outcrops. And in this, this is one of my most memorable sightings in 2017. This was a pair of mating leopards, and I would never forget this sighting. I gotta figure out so how to you sleep see better. the background. Um, I went to bed just with my mind racing because of Nadia's uh, comments. I think somebody's mic is still on. If you don't mind, please turn off, switch off your mic so that uh, uh, 
uh, we don't disturb everyone else and uh, you can ask the questions once the presentation is over thank you so uh, so speaking about yala uh, so here the landscape is much more different you see them uh, mostly on rocks and uh, uh, the, it's quite different uh, when it comes to photography and they're very bold as well. So this is another typical Yala landscape where you see the leopards relaxed on the on these rocky boulders. And um, this was an instance I photographed last year, a uh, mother and a cub. So you, you get to see a lot of behavior. You get, uh, you get to see the young cubs, you get adult females, you get to see hunting sequences. So it's amazing for leopard behavior. During the dry season, um, the leopards do uh, come out more often. So the dry season lasts normally from uh, June to about September. And during this time, both in Yala and Wilpatu, the they do come out uh, closer towards the, the safari roads uh, to drink water. Then we go to the old man of the forest. This is this bizarre looking animal is called sloth bear. So uh, the old, the British, the taxon, uh, the, the, science, the naturalists back in the day uh, mistook this for a species of sloth. And they're found in India and Sri Lanka, but they're actually a species from the bear family and very strange looking as well. And uh, they are found in the same zones, areas where the leopards are found and uh, don't be fooled by their appearance they're actually some of the most dangerous animals you can encounter on foot and a lot of the sri lankan villagers are very wary of this animal when they venture into the forest because they have a lot of cases where they've been mauled by these bears and they're more elusive i would say than even leopards but uh, during a certain period especially during may and june uh, you see them more out in the open because they feed on these particular berries. They are called palu berries, and um, they uh, these berry, they are very sweet and they gorge themselves in these berries and uh, they uh, uh, they get almost intoxicated after eating so much. And you can see them ambling along almost clownishly along the roads. And uh, as you see, they. They are not as harmless as they look. These claws can be quite dangerous. And uh, there are a lot of cases where people have been mauled in the face by these bears. And they use them to dig up termites. This is in Vilpattu. You notice the dense foliage which uh, gives out the location. And uh, they are quite clownish in behavior as well. So this was an instance uh, during the dry season in September in Yala National Park. I, we just parked ourselves at a water hole and waited all day hoping that some leopards would come to drink water and out came this funny looking bear and uh, uh, he just decided to have a nice go at the mud and uh, enjoy walking around and uh, basically uh, enjoying himself and uh, after he uh, was done with it he just uh, happily walked away. So the sloth bear is a very uh, very unique animal you can see and uh, then we move to another very iconic animal which is important to Sri Lankan culture and history as well and uh, this is the Asian elephant and Sri Lanka uh, believe it or not despite being an island with 20 million people has 6,000 or more elef wild elephants uh, in our country and we are home to the largest gathering of Asian elephants in the world. Uh, so this occurs every year from May to September. Uh, there are two uh, big lakes in uh, the central areas of the country uh, called Minneria and Kaudulla. And both these lakes, uh, during the dry season, uh, water is released for agriculture. And uh, once it's released, uh, the receding waters result in uh, grasslands growing as you can see and these grasses attract elephants from all over the region into one place and during the peak time uh, peak season of the gathering we see about 300 to 350 elephants all in one place which is amazing and is amazing wildlife spectacle and you see young ones to adult males 
you and you get totally immersed in this experience you see the elephants once you do get surrounded by a herd all you got to do is just observe their behaviors and it's something being such intelligent animals as well it's uh, you can spend all day or many days just observing how these animals interact with each other their social interactions how the young ones play with each other how the adults greet each other and it's a very nice immersive experience so uh, the gathering is some if you are going at the right time the gathering is a place uh, that you would i would highly recommend you uh, do experience so there's more photographs of um, elephant herds in the gathering and this picture actually uh, just to signify though, though we have 6000 elephants uh, most of them are found outside uh, national parks and this photograph was taken at a local village believe it or not so uh, the elephants do have constant conflict with the local farmers and the villagers and this was such a case and uh, this herd of elephants uh, appeared out of nowhere uh, at a village lake so these lakes are all man made and villagers use them to bathe and wash themselves after a hard day of farming and we were waiting on the other side where the villagers were just uh, bathing and uh, having a good time and suddenly this beautiful herd appeared and it was so stunning that the, nobody really uh, you know did anything to harm or disturb them but they, we all admired and watched uh, as they peacefully drank water and went back into this small patch of forest just bordering a large farm so human elephant conflict is a real problem and uh, us as sri lankans and conservationists we are fight, you know trying to work with the government to see how we can connect or increase the area of protected areas for these animals because being large you know 3 to 4 four ton animals uh, they need a lot to eat and what happens is if they lose habitat uh the next best option is to raid the crops and farms of the villages and that results in conflict we do lose about 200 to 250 elephants every year due to this conflict because people of course retaliate and there are a lot of issues uh, on both sides so it's a problem which we are tackling and something uh, which is very real in sri lanka and uh, this is uh, another photograph taken in vilpattu um you can see the dense foliage and this beautiful tusk so the in asian elephants only the male elephants bear tusk bear ivory and in sri lanka out of the males only around uh, 10% would have tusk so it's very rare to see an elephant with ivory and uh, they are very scarce and also uh they are in danger of poachers as well so this particular bull was very shy and i just had a few seconds to take this picture so the elephants are very close to my heart and i would say it's my they are my favorite animals because i just love the behavior as well and uh, besides the large charismatic animals we have a lot of other mammals which we uh, which are herbivores and one of the key species you would see while you are in sri lanka would be the spotted deer they are the most common species you find they are mainly found in the dry zone in the dry areas and they are the favorite prey of the leopard and as you can see the name spotted deer comes from the markings on its body and then we have the samba this is the largest species of deer in sri lanka they are very large and almost the size of uh, the elk which you have in uh, in the us and uh, they are found uh, in the dry zone as well as in the highlands and in the mountainous areas as well and um, then we have the barking deer this uh, as the name suggests the barking deer is because uh, when it's alarmed they let out uh, a sound which sounds like a bark of a dog and they are also known as the indian muntjac and all these three species of deer are key uh, when we are on safari uh because they are the uh, they are the uh, heralds who actually uh, give out the alarm calls if there is a leopard around each have their own unique call and uh, we do uh, keep a ear out to li listen to these calls and uh, because them being the prey of the leopard they are very wary as well so they let out a call if they see it or see a leopard moving 
And uh, another favorite prey of the leopard and a common herbivore in Sri Lanka is the wild boar. The Indi it's called the Indian wild boar. And uh, despite uh, being uh, one of the prey species of the leopard, e even they keep a are very wary of them because they can be pretty dangerous. As you see, this uh, old male has sharp tusks and uh, an interesting story uh, is once in uh, while on safari, uh, our safari jeep actually got uh, attacked by a wild boar and uh, we lost one of our tires because uh, of the sharp tusks. So they are pretty aggressive as well and even though the lepers do hunt them, they are very careful and uh, they mainly uh, try to catch them unawares. And then we also have, uh, this, this is the second largest uh, mammal in, in land in Sri Lanka. This is the Asiatic wild water buffalo. And they also are uh, pretty feisty animals and uh, quite aggressive as well. They are found in most of the safari parks and uh, they are as, as big as the African Cape Buffalo and with large sweeping horns. They can be quite uh, intimidating. So you see you have a lot of mammals on land, uh, large mammals and then you have the smaller ones. This is the golden jackal. Uh, they are a subspecies uh, called the South Indian jackal and uh, they are found uh, throughout the island and they are known as scavengers and they are seen quite often and it's, uh, it's the only species of uh, wild canid in Sri Lanka from the canine species. And then we move to uh, some more cats. So the leopard is categorized as a big cat, but uh, we also have three species of wild cat. And uh, out of this, this is the jungle cat. So it's a very nice uh, species of wildcat but it's very rarely seen uh, one of the only places where you can see them during daylight is a park called Udawalawe National Park uh, but even there it's pretty tricky uh, the main uh, way we search for them is we listen to the bird calls because like the the deer call in alarm for the leopard the birds call in alarm for this cat so we listen in the grasses and the reeds uh, if the birds are chirping and calling in an unusual manner that means a uh, jungle cat is about. So it's all about uh, anticipation and patience. And uh, also in the night, we do night safaris during the dry season. And these night safaris are mostly outside the national parks uh, in the borders and the buffer zones. And these areas uh, are where villages also do cultivations. And during the dry season, uh, they tend to have finished the harvest. And these open fields, uh, have a lot of mice and these jungle cats are, uh, tend to come out at night to feed on these mice and another wild cat sorry uh, another wild cat is the fishing cat they too are found throughout the island but very rarely seen uh, they are even found in the urban areas even though a lot of residents in our cities don't really know that they exist uh, but if you really go look on, go out looking for them, you might get lucky. But during our night safaris, we have good chances during the dry season because these cats are, as the name suggests, fishing cat. They do catch fish and they're aquatic, semi-aquatic in nature. And you do see them uh, during uh, these night safaris sitting by the waterside. Some of these dried out water pools and uh, water holes, you see them waiting for to catch fish. So uh, it's a good time to see them. So the dry seasons are usually from May to September. So during that time, you might get lucky. And the rarest of the cats is the rusty spotted cat. This is, um, this is the uh, smallest species of cat in Sri Lanka and also known as the smallest species of wild cat in the world. It's a very rare cat to see and uh, we are quite, uh, you have to be very lucky to see them. And I think uh, James also had uh, a glimpse of this during one of the night safaris uh, he did in Sri Lanka, but they're very hard to see. Uh, daytime, you do have freak sightings, but uh, best is during the night safari. So they are more, all these three species of cats are very active during the night and they do rest during the day. And then we also have a species of otter in Sri Lanka. This is the Eurasian otter. And uh, this was photographed in Horton Plains in the mountainous regions, but they're found throughout the island, but not very easy to see. Um, 
and you can see them during the dry seasons even during the night safaris in certain ponds and pools where the water is drying up you do see them out and walk, uh, playing around during the night so it's another special mammal you can see in sri lanka so as you see it's not just the big animals but you also see some charismatic smaller species and talking about charismatic species you have the monkeys sri lanka has three species of monkeys and this is the gray langur they are uh, they are not endemic to sri lanka but uh, they are found in india as well they are also known as the hanuman langur and uh, they are found mainly in the dry zones of sri lanka so most of the national parks have this species and they along with the deer also do let out alarm calls a very unique call uh, if they see a leopard and uh, they actually help the deer and the deer and uh, the monkey works together uh, because they have a higher vantage point and they do let out a very unique alarm call then you have the this is called the toke macaque this is an endemic species of monkey and very commonly seen in sri lanka and they can be pretty annoying as well sometimes uh, especially like uh, during picnic sites and places where people do gather they do tend to come and disrupt and steal people's food they are like the baboons in africa uh, you have the toke macaques in sri lanka so they uh, do tend to steal and attack people as well they can be a bit aggressive um, but they are endemic to sri lanka and unique to this island and in fact a very famous uh, documentary was made about a troop of macaques uh, called monkey kingdom which was done by disney nature is a lovely program if you do have time have a look it's uh, they show a lot of the social interactions of these amazing species then we have the third species of monkey this too is endemic to sri lanka this is called the purple faced leaf monkey and uh, they they are found throughout the island but each region from the dry zone to the wet zone to the urban areas each have their own unique uh, physical features which they are, make them different for example the monkeys you find in the mountain areas are much shaggier in the, in their coats and the the beard as you say is very dense and uh, they are actually called uh, uh, bear monkeys in the mountains and uh, this uh, particular individual was photographed in singharaja in the rainforest and in the rainforest this particular troop has a very unique mutation and this is what it is uh, some monkeys a recessive gene causes some of the monkeys to come out as pure white so it's a very unique mutation and you see them only in a certain particular troop uh, in the rainforest and they're very hard to see it's or i just saw them once uh, during my travels and they are very uh, rare so this whole troop had about three individuals who were pure white in color compared to the blackish grayish color of the uh, the rest of the troop so so when it comes to monkeys is uh, if you are interested there are some great primatologists which we have as guides who can take uh, can showcase the different behavioral patterns of these animals then the other primates the most bizarre we have in sri lanka is the loris the slender loris and they are found strictly uh, in the night they are nocturnal animals they are found in the night and we call them the elves of the forest as they look so bizarre and almost alien like in appearance but actually they are uh, from the primate family and we have two species we have the gray loris as you uh, we, the gray gray slender loris um, which is seen here uh, and we have certain forest patches in in the dry areas where this gray slender loris is found where we do uh, search for them in the night and we have had great uh, success as well and uh, then we have the red slender loris this is found in the wet zone uh, they are a little bit harder to find and this the red slender loris is an endemic subspecies uh, to sri lanka and uh, there we have certain locations uh, even close to colombo uh, in some of the forest patches where we do have uh these and you need specialists to see them in the night because uh, they are very shy and uh, despite their cute almost cuddly looking appearance uh, they are predators and they are carnivorous and uh, they do feed on small lizards 
uh, and even small birds uh, if they do grab a bird they would eat it and they are they are pretty uh, they are predators uh, and who hunt in the night and um, then we move to the birds sri lanka has over 400 species of birds recorded and out of which 34 are endemic to sri lanka they are found nowhere else in the world and these are my favorite birds out of all of them this is, these are the iconic serendip scopsaul they are endemic to sri lanka a very rare species uh, found in the rainforest and they were dis they were the latest discovery to science uh, these are actually two young ones they are chicks that's why they look very fluffy in nature and they were discovered in 2004 as a new species and uh, by one science, particular scientist and uh, before that no one knew of the existence the the scientists had listened to this particular call and uh, first initially thought that it was a call of a frog and then thought look this just sounds quite unusual maybe i should do some research and uh, found that it was the call was made by this particular owl and then further scientific research and papers were done and uh, finally they were it discovered uh, they declared this as a new species so uh, they're found in the rainforest and one of the most sought after birds in sri lanka so i was very lucky to see two juveniles together it's almost unheard of um, but during the day they roost and they're nocturnal in nature so if you find them and spot them during the day they usually don't move if you don't disturb them you can get a good sighting and besides this uh, there are many endemic birds this is the national bird of sri lanka this is the sri lanka jungle fowl uh, so it's part it's you know you it's not just a rooster it's a wild unique species and you see the beautiful coloration you'll never get this coloration uh, from domestic uh, fowl so this is a wild species and uh, they are unique to Sri Lanka and it's significant that it's the national bird of the country and uh, they are found throughout the island and quite commonly seen but you never tire of seeing them because of their coloration and the beauty and you have so many uh, other species this is the yellow fronted barbet seen mainly in the west uh, the wet zone the rainforest and this is another very rare bird to see this is the Sri Lanka spur fowl uh, you normally hear their call in the rainforest, but you never see them. There's one particular spot where we we set we have set up hides to wait and see if they arrive. So they used to come out into the open, and uh, but even a small click from a camera is enough to chase uh, scare them away. So they are very shy. You have the grey hornbill. This is also an endemic bird um, found only in Sri Lanka, and uh, they're found throughout the island, mainly in. Uh, even in the wet zones in the rainforest as well as the dry zones uh, but not in the mountainous areas then uh, this is a very rare bird this is a uh, endemic as well this is the red-faced malkoha uh, they are found mainly in the rainforest and as the name suggests they have a very beautiful red coloration in the face and uh, they are pretty tricky to see mainly because they fly at the top of the canopies in the rainforest so you have to keep looking at the top canopies on the large trees to see their movements and then uh, we have two species of uh, endemic parrots in sri lanka and one of them is this this is the uh, layard's parakeet uh, the easiest way to distinguish them is with the gray head uh, because the others all have more greenish in color throughout the body uh, but they are found in, also in the rain more in the wet zone in the rainforest areas and this is this uh, besides the serendip scops owl this is the only other endemic owl to sri lanka this is the chestnut backed owlet another bird from the rainforest so as you see the rainforest is the best place the lowland rainforests are the best place to see most of these endemics and uh, you can cover about 25 species in total in this area then we move to the mountains in the, uh, the areas like Horton Plains, then the mountainous areas. You have few species which are unique. Uh, this is the Sri Lanka bush warbler found in uh, that area. They are pretty rare to see. But the holy grail of the mountain species is uh, this the Sri Lanka whistling thrush, also known as the Orenga. And it's basically a mythical bird because they are so hard to see. And it basic birders come from all over the region to see this uh, 
uh, see this unique species and sometimes most of the time go back empty-handed and uh, this was a very lucky photograph which I took uh, after several trips back-to-back -back trips to Horton Plains there's a particular water hole and this pool is called the Arenga pool so the name of the bird is the Arenga it's a local name and uh, we, we it was a very rare sighting so beautiful bird this is the male bird this is they have a bluish coloration the female is more brownish in color but this is a very special bird to see the Sri Lanka whistling thrush then in the rainforest in the lowlands once again there's a very stunningly colored bird called the Sri Lanka blue magpie as you see the coloration is beautiful uh, they are actually part of the crow family so that uh, and they can be pretty forward as well and uh, they are very destructive they are known to destroy a lot of the nests of other birds and prey, prey on a lot of the chicks but nevertheless it's a stunning bird to see in the rainforest and very unique then uh, these are the birds uh, which are resident but not endemic and this is the this is the largest species of owl uh, this is known as the forest eagle owl and uh, in sri lanka it's known as the devil bird and because uh, their call is so scary and uh, it's almost ha haunting in nature and uh, local myths uh, say that uh, when the devil bird calls out in the night somebody in the village is going to die and they actually abandon the village if they do hear the call uh, back in this is back in the ancient days not uh, now but uh, basically in, in the local language they were co called gampalwas gampala means they they basically make the village abandoned and uh, people were very frightful of this uh, call but it's just it's a beautiful bird uh, and uh, it's a lovely lovely animal to see and it's a massive bird and they do prey on large mammals and uh, in one particular occasion i did see a, a bird carrying a purple faced leaf monkey in its uh, claws so it's a very powerful owl and uh, the largest species of owl in sri lanka and then you have a uh, very colorful bird i call this the jewel of the forest this is the uh, the three-toed kingfisher seen in mostly in the wet zones but also in parts like Vilpatu as well in the dark corners very areas where uh, very dark as well beautiful coloration as you see uh, shades of blue and orange and purple and a very tiny little birds very small in, uh, but despite its size uh, they are quite uh, stunning to see and uh, they are seen in uh, South Asia and Southeast Asia as well and uh, then you have the iconic Indian pea for the peacock basically uh, you see them quite often in the dry zones and uh, they are quite numerous now and uh, after never never having seen them in the cities they're slowly moving into the urban areas as well so the reason why they are quite protected and uh, safe is uh, uh, there's a belief that this bird is sacred and was used by some one Hindu god as uh, this vehicle so the god Kataragama so that's why they are they nobody really kills these birds so they are they are quite they breed quite often uh, one danger uh, of have seen this bird uh, in Horton Plains after many years is that we are scared that they would uh, they would feed on a lot of the endemic lizards who are quite helpless and uh, because this bird is not known to be in the highlands but now they are slowly moving towards the mountainous areas as well so um, we are pressing the, the the wildlife conservation the departments to take action to make control these numbers because if they move to the highlands the a lot of the endemic lizards are in danger because they they are pretty slow uh, in nature as well and these birds will easily pick on them another bird this is a juvenile um, brown wood owl seen in the rainforest as well so you can see the juveniles have fluffy feathering as well they are not fully grown and uh, uh, this is a very common uh, eagle this is the crested uh, hawk eagle found mainly in the dry zones and uh, quite see, uh, often uh, seen during the daytime and another bird which is a seasonal migrant to sri lanka this is the indian pita and the migration season normally starts from uh, 
Jan like about end of December and last up to April. And during this period, a lot of migrant species come from northern India and Russia. And we do have, uh, we did have migrating groups of greater flamingo as well. And now they have become resident in the northern parts of Sri Lanka. Then we move on to the reptiles. And my favorite reptile of all, these are the saltwater crocodiles, the largest uh, reptile and the largest species of crocodile in the uh, planet. So we see them mostly in the coastal areas, uh, in the estuaries and the rivers. And uh, they are giant animals. You see them growing from 12 to 18 feet in length. The largest we've seen is 18 feet. This particular individual is 18 feet long. And uh, I call him the river god. So we do a boat safari in, uh, in the south of Sri Lanka. There's a river called the Nilwala. And uh, this river is full of saltwater crocodiles. So Sri Lanka has two species. So this is the largest species and we the largest species in the world, in fact. And uh, you see the young ones as well in these mangrove forests, uh, in the mangrove areas. And uh, this particular individual is, has, is preying on some carcass of an animal, not really sure what it was, but um, you see quite a lot of crocodiles on this boat, on this river tour. And uh, this is the other species, the second species, uh, which are found more inland. Uh, this is called the mugger crocodile or the marsh crocodile. So you see the coloration is also more grayish in color and they're a little bit smaller and less aggressive than the saltwater crocodile. So most of the national parks like Yala and Wilpatu, they all have the mugger crocodile. The saltwater croc is normally found in the estuaries uh, in the south as well as on the western coast near this, even, even actually in Colombo in the city. So uh, be, besides the crocs, we have some amazing uh, uh, reptiles and uh, James loves the reptiles. And uh, this is a lie-headed lizard, also known as the hump nose lizard, the largest agamid lizard species in Sri Lanka, beautiful coloration, almost a, in appearance like a dragon. And this is the kangaroo lizard found in the rainforest and um, another endemic species. And even this, uh, even the lie-headed lizard is endemic. And uh, then in the mountains, so like uh, like I mentioned the, about the peacocks, they, they are, they, this is, uh, these are a unique species found in the mountains in Horton Plains National Park, for example. This is the rhino horn lizard, a beautiful, beautifully colored lizard. And as the name suggests, they do have a horn on the tip of its snout. And uh, they, they are less uh, agile compared to the lizards you find in the dry areas. And um, also, uh, that's why we are worried that these peacocks can come and feed, you know, prey. E these will be easy pickings for them. And they are very rare to see. So we are quite, quite concerned about this as a conservation issue. And this is the second species uh, found in the mountain. This is the pygmy lizard, another species quite slow when it's in its movements and quite docile as well. You see them uh, along with the rhino horn lizards in mostly the same habitat uh, in, among the moss and the small branches in, in these cloud forests. And quite not too easy uh, to see, but if you do know a few locations, you can get lucky. And then you have the, for me, the, the most iconic species of snake in Sri Lanka. This is the Sri Lanka green pit viper. They are found uh, mainly in the wet zone, but there are variants in the dry zone as well. And this is an endemic species of snake, Sri Lanka, beautifully colored. And unfortunately, its beauty has become its, uh, its uh, curse because they are one of the uh, high, biggest smuggle species in Sri Lanka for the international reptile trade and they are not as easy to see as they used to be because of illegal smuggling and uh, they are not highly venomous they are mildly venomous you do end up in the hospital but it's very unlikely that you can get killed by a bite of this uh, snake but stunning stunning snake to see and besides that of course you get the iconic uh, spectacle cobra and uh, they are seen in india as well they are not endemic but a stunning snake to see and uh, 
and then also the hump nose viper and there are several variants depending on the zones the dry zones the wet zones have different variants of this uh, amazing species this is also mildly venomous uh, the cobra is highly venomous it's one of the few highly venomous species in sri lanka and this is the saw scale viper and uh, they are found in a not very often in uh, most of the areas they are found far in the north of the island uh, the saw scale viper the name is because it rubs its scales to make a saw like noise when it's uh, alarmed and in a defensive mode and this is uh, james's favorite uh, snake this is the russell's viper the most uh, venomous species of snake and uh, uh, also a beautifully colored uh, uh, individual and uh, they are found throughout the island and uh, they are highly venomous and uh, but of course a stunningly beautiful snake and um, that being said we move to the ocean sri lanka being an island has much more to offer than the animals in the land and our oceans are rich with life and we are proud to have the largest animal in the world in our waters the blue whale there are resident blue whales in sri lanka and what's amazing is that they are found like in the southern coast and you can actually see the largest animal in the world in the morning and then head to one of the parks like yala or udawalave uh, for an evening safari and see the largest asian um, animal in the elephant so both in one day that's what makes sri lanka special and we do uh, organize boat safari uh, boat boat tours as well as aerial tours so we do use uh, aeroplanes to see them from the air this gives a unique perspective uh, and you can see the size and scale of the blue whales and uh, they are resident throughout the throughout the year and they feed on uh, small plankton like animals called krill and besides uh, yes these are under some underwater photographs as well taken by uh, some film crews which we work with and uh, besides the blue whales we also have uh, spinner dolphins these are very acrobatic species as you can see they are very uh, very lively and you see uh, in certain parts like the western coast of sri lanka uh, we get large super pods of over 1000 individuals in uh, in one group so the spinner dolphins are also very iconic and like once you do head out into the sea you might get surrounded by thousands of dolphins and seasonally we are lucky to see migrating sperm whales as well so usually the months from february to april is great for sperm whales and we see groups of 30 to 50 individuals and uh, even last year we had a crew from national geographic who was documenting them for one of their features so they are very different to the blue whales they are the largest tooth species uh, tooth whale and these are some underwater photographs which gives you an indication of their unique head shape and uh, it's a unique uh, animal to see and if you are really really lucky you do get the orcas who come once in a while to prey on species like the blue whale and the sperm whale so they are known as the wolves of the sea and uh, we do have a resident population but they are very hard to see you they usually circle around the island so uh, you, the best times is uh, to see them is the end of march so the ocean is full of life and we have so much to offer besides the land animals so uh, that's what makes sri lanka special and uh, so this is just an indication of all the places i mentioned the so the rainforest the singharaja is in the lowlands in this area uh, a lot of the safari parks the yala is located here wilpatto is located here and then the mountain areas are here and then the ocean where the whales are located here so so much to see in this island and besides the wildlife we have a rich cultural heritage sri lanka's written heritage dates back to 6th century the 6th century bc and we have some amazing archaeological unesco world heritage sites um, this is sigiriya rock fortress is an ancient fortress which was used uh, uh, almost 2000 years ago and then you have this is the city of polonnaruwa so you have some very really, really uh, well preserved archaeological sites which are also 
very significant culturally and also uh, as religious sites as well. So there are uh, many places like that and also Sri Lanka's main main treasure is its people. We have very hospitable, warm, friendly people who are very obliging and welcoming to visitors. So uh, it's a land of smiles and uh, I think this picture summarizes everything there is about Sri Lanka. And I hope that you enjoyed this session and uh, this is just a summary of why Sri Lanka is the ultimate safari. Uh, there are 34 uh, endemic species of birds, 400 overall species of birds and special species like the loris, the fishing cat, the rusty spotted cat, the blue whales, so many things like that. And the ability, the greatest thing is the ability to see all of this in a short period of time. And also the different landscapes within the island from the mountainous regions to the coastal areas. And also the country has some great hotels, lodges and campsites, which also uh, are located everywhere. So it's great uh, choices uh, which you can choose from. And the naturalists are great. We have some really good scientists and naturalists who work with us. And the culture and history uh, also adds to that. It's not just wildlife. And the food, if you are in Sri Lanka, you have to try the food. It's very different from Indian food. The flavors, the taste, everything is different. Sri Lanka is known as the land of spices. So spices are, make it quite unique. So that being said, uh, istuti, that is the Sri Lankan word. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening in. Uh, if you do have any questions, please, uh, please do uh, ask. Um, you can unmute your mics and you can ask and James and myself will be pleased to answer them. That was a beautiful, really informative presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, it was really fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, Rajiv, this is Barbara. I do have a question. Mm -hmm. um, so I know you're working with James on his tour, but obviously you're a, um, a DMC in Sri Lanka. So you you work with any groups, incoming groups coming Yes, in? we do. So uh, maybe James can pass on the details of my details to you and uh, I can work on some, uh, depends, even if you're coming on an individual tour, we can organize that for you. Great, I have a group that does a lot of um, photography, so. Of course, and uh, lots, if it's a photography group, photography. I, I, might, I might guide them personally as well, because me being a photographer as well, I've, uh, I like to give my uh, input as well. It just helps a lot, especially when you're on safari, knowing a photographic angle and asking the safari drivers to position and angle it properly it helps a lot great and james how long is your tour next june um I, it's june 1 to 16. so just a little oh, bit nice. over two weeks nice yeah, it's, great um, and where do you start in the in the capital in colombo yes we're starting in colombo and ending in colombo um it covers almost everything, I, I believe, isn't it, James? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it covers the entire country from north to south mm. um, and does it in a not very hurried manner. Uh, yeah, only thing is, I think I, we don't cover uh, the marine life because uh, uh, June is not really um, the best season, so we didn't really include that. Uh, usually for whale watching, uh, we usually do, uh, do it from November to April. So that's the best time where the oceans are calm. But besides that, everything else is covered. Okay. And James, did you do you already have that all put together, or are you still working on it? No, I that's mean, all put together. That's a that's a set itinerary <clears throat> on the great. website. Um, oh, can, okay, good. I'll go and find it. Sorry, I didn't sorry. Look, I didn't look for it ahead of time. Yeah. It's wonderful. So I definitely have some friends who I know would be interested. So that's lovely. Um, yeah. yeah, I think. Yeah. One of the things that that, um, that I really want to express about Sri Lanka is just how well everything works. I mean, you you know, that, in, in the first place, I mean, I you know, I've gone to a lot of different countries and seen how a lot of different things work, including here in Honduras. And <clears throat> the logistics alone there are seamless. It's it's not one of these tours where you go and you're you know kind of wondering what's happening, what's what's going on next. 
why is this taking so long? Everything happens the way it's supposed to happen and when it happens. Um, another really big feature, the, di the diversity of wildlife, Rajiv did a really good job with, but one of the things that astounded me is how it's just everywhere. I mean, everywhere we went, there was wildlife. I mean, we could be in a, in a, in a lodge on the edge of a town and there would be wildlife. We would be seeing, you know, this kind of lizard or that kind of bird or elephants or what have you. I mean, it's just amazing. I came home with more camera cards full than I ever expected on our last trip in Sri Lanka. It's just, it just overwhelming the amount of wildlife. Right. Um, one of my experiences, my area of work is with elephants and behavior and um, I don't, I love watching birds, but I don't know a lot about them. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't get enough. I was just so enchanted. And when I came home, I had a little bit of a, a down fall because I felt like everything was just so brown compared to um, the beauty and glory of the birds in Sri Lanka that are everywhere. Like you said, just of course. go outside and have a cup of coffee and it's surrounded with its color. It's just really yeah. spectacular. Yeah. I know it's uh, it's amazing, and uh, especially if you go to those hot spots like the rainforest, you might see mm -hmm. things you never see anywhere else in the world. Where most of them are endemic, they're not seen anywhere else. Yeah. yeah. And I had the pleasure of uh, the people I was working with were all wildlife biologists and and um, officials, and so okay. we got got to push ourselves a little bit with our comfort zone. Right. Like, That's especially with regards to elephants being surrounded by a lot of males and things like yeah. that. So that was really special. Well, you, yeah, of course, you, as you know, you, you had your experience. When, you're, when you do get surrounded uh, by a herd of elephants, the main thing is to stay calm. If you stay calm <laughs> and you're relaxed, let them charge. You know, I, I normally don't even care if they charge unless, because when you, you look at their behavior, you know if, they re, if, they are, if it's a mock charge. Almost 90% of the time it's a mock charge. They don't mean it. And you just if you just stand your ground, they're not they're not going to do anything, you know. So yeah. yeah, when you were speaking of the people, something I really enjoyed is the clever sense of humor yeah. of the Sri Lankan people. <laughs> so that was something really special, really unique. Yeah, yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, we just put a link for the for the itinerary uh, in the comments here, and yeah. I don't. And I hope Rajiv. You're not taking this as a criticism, but you're really understating the cuisine as well. <laughs> of course, yeah. yeah. If you, but yeah, of course, you 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 have to be used to a, a palate which is used to a little bit of spice, um, because it is spicy. Uh, uh, that is that's the basic essence of Sri Lankan food. We can you do make it less spicy for foreigners uh, because I know most of them are it's very difficult to taste uh, very spicy cuisine but uh, and they're very it's very unique uh, to indian food so it's completely different if you have been to india you would know the kind of flavors and sri lankan food is very different the spices the way it's made is very different okay anyone else i have any questions no but thank you for sending the itinerary pleasure yeah, absolutely a pleasure. And I, you know, everyone knows where to find me or how to find me. So if you have any, you know, obviously everybody has things they have to get to um, when when things slow down. And you you have any other questions or, or comments, feel free to let me know. Um, I'm I'm here for you. Great, Rashid. This is Jane. Thank you very Hi. much for this presentation. Thank it was, you so much. It was really superb. Excellent. Appreciate it. Um, Thank you so much. I have been to Sri Lanka. It's a great country. It's wonderful, and I have seen a blue whale. But yeah. um, not as many your photographs are just absolutely superb brought it all back so thank you so much for that appreciate it thank you so i've just much. got i've just got a question about um the safari the sort of safaris that you can buy as you go around mm -hmm. and I, is there still a problem with the um with overcrowding in in some of so, the elephant drives um, so the thing what's, is what's your take on okay. that uh, the way we operate is that we are very mindful of this overcrowding and the main overcrowding issue is with Yala National Park and the way we have solved it is that we usually uh, stay at a different entrance and the other corner of the park where it's less crowded almost uh, one third or less than that of the crowds you would see and when you enter the park there's hardly any vehicles 
and that area mm -hmm. is actually even better for leopards than uh, uh, the main entrance which tends to be very crowded and also there is another park nearby which we go to which is almost uh, uh, you know, it's very few people uh, you find that it's called Veheragala and we mix between both the main Yala Park and this to mitigate on the crowds and if you are, if you'd like to get a more private experience, I would say Vilpattu is better because Vilpattu is a larger park, it's a huge, it's the largest national park in Sri Lanka and uh, we do uh, we uh, do get a lot of sightings which are almost private in nature because the park is big mm -hmm. and we spend two full day safaris we get the lunch and the breakfast and all the refreshments that goes with it uh, in delivered into the park so you have all your comforts and there is a picnic stop if you want to and we spend the full day in the park and it's less crowded as well that sounds so great we, i'm just wondering also if you would um if you did you participate in anything to improve the welfare of the animals because of with course. such a with such a gung ho approach by other people not necessarily you yeah i just wondered if you were if you were so you know, i am i am basically very active in the sri lankan conservation scene and uh, currently uh, there are a few things we are working on i'm actually an activist as well and uh, we've been i've been an activist almost most of my life i've been i've been threatened i've been uh, given uh, warnings all sorts of stuff by the like you know corrupt officials and different other parties but i still you know continue to go go about my way to uh, help conservation because this is all we have and one of the main things i'm still campaigning for is to extend the protected areas because the areas are quite scattered and this is really affecting the wild elephants uh, because that's the reason for the human elephant conflict and what we are trying to propose to uh, the current government is to merge these areas uh, in a way that there's a large extent of land for the elephants to survive in and move around in and uh, <clears throat> secondly uh, also uh, uh, we are working with uh, the government on anti-poaching especially during the time of the lockdown uh, poaching was quite prevalent in most of the national parks and uh, we managed to uh, get the army down and uh, help to uh, rid of the poachers uh, immediately. Within a few days we uh, managed to send in the special forces and we got an agreement that the, the army would manage the anti-poaching because they are more equipped and experienced in the jungles to uh, help with protecting the borders of the park so that poachers don't exist, uh, so don't enter. So like that, I'm continuously working uh, on a private basis uh, away from my job. Uh, that's basically where my heart is. And I would definitely, until my last day, continue to work towards conservation of Sri Lanka. Thank you very much. I'm really Thank pleased you. to hear that. It's yes. very heartwarming. Any, anyone else? I just want to say thank you. It was really beautiful. Thank, thank you for so this. Much. Thank you. Appreciate thank it. You to everybody. And yeah. Thank you to everyone. And thank you to Raji. And, um, you know, know that, that being a part of things like this, this webinar or being part of a tour or what have you, um, you're making an immediate impact at the things that Raji was just talking about, conservation. Um, it's, it's why he and I are in, in this sort of line of work. Um, we care so much about the wildlife that, that he's been presenting to you, and we care so much about this this world that we're on. So uh, thank you, everyone, for, for being a part of it. Thanks again. It, the pictures were superb. Your commentary was excellent. It was very enjoyable. Thanks. Thank so you much. very much. And James for setting it up. Okay. Anyone, anyone else with any questions or comments? Well, in that case, Rajiv, Rajiv, I guess let's wrap this up and yeah. maybe we can do it again in another couple of weeks. Of course. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening in and thanks, James, for arranging this. Right on. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for thank sharing. You